This is Twit. I got to send you that Snapdragon thing. I still have not I have to go down to the UPS store. And oh, no worries, no worries. Um, yeah, so the, <laughs> that that box was so successful, Microsoft's doing it again. No, <laughs> 200 well, very cool. happy users. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's impossible. So th- what they've announced and are releasing is uh, not until next year. I don't think it's coming out until the spring is a what is basically a, a net PC. Remember, uh, what were those um, thin PCs? Yeah, thin or, PCs. Oracle offered them. Yeah, they had yeah, the like think. Sun Microsystem uh, yeah. talked this up, right? Yeah. The network is um, the computer or something. Like yeah, that. and they were onto something. It was just they were about 20 years too early on that well, one. Well, and by uh, the way, can I point out, Paul, for years mm-hmm. I've been saying this is what Microsoft should do, yep. that the best, most secure way to offer Windows is in the cloud on a thin client, which they You mean to tell me that my last act as Windows administrator <laughs> is going to be handing over Windows? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, yes, it's, for sure. If they priced it better. Now, the, the client's not expensive, right? It's just the the monthly fee for it's Windows the monthly the cloud. Fee. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right, and and that varies wildly depending on the resources you have in that cloud PC and uh, the type the capabilities, et cetera. Yeah, but, but it doesn't uh, cost much when you're not using it. Like for intermittent use, it's true. quite effective. Good point. Well, this we do is, that. Yeah, we this do is that. The, Our editors were working on Premiere in the cloud using us. They would spin up Windows mm-hmm. when they need it, and they would and spin it down yeah. as long there as they go. turned it off. It wouldn't cost us anything. Yeah, right. And if you forget about it over the for a couple of weeks, you get yeah, a bill, exactly. and you're really sad. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah so, don't but, leave it know, on <laughs> to those of us in the sort of what is now like the client you know windows community or whatever we look at this we think could could i have one of these please with like a you i know, saw like a an Mac interesting Mini, you know? statement though that one mm-hmm. of the reasons it's hardened is that it doesn't have it doesn't offer win 32 yeah the, yeah no it doesn't do, really do much locally it's it's a very stripped down version of windows that's just designed to do the connect the connectivity stuff and some basic but you, even there. in the cloud do you have when you don't have win 32 in the cloud either no, oh, you do. do. It's it's, it's oh, it's you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get. No, it. there's some unspecified Intel processor in this thing. It's probably like a Celeron. You know, uh, they said a custom OS. Is it a Windows OS or just? It's a- Windows. Yeah, it's a stripped down version of Windows. It's probably Windows 10x. You know, they had to do something with it. It's probably mm-hmm. Edge. Um, <laughs> All you need is Edge, right? It's a, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a web app. Uh, no, I don't. It's it's unclear, but it has you know a couple ports and you know whatever. It's just the basics, but it's a cute little box. I I, I still. I, I'm intrigued that Leo actually had a really good real world example there because I still I wonder about this from an IT perspective. Why, it, how compelling this could be? I mean, I, I, Cert, I've certainly talked to some shops that have been all in this for years, right? Like they yeah. they use virtual desktop going all the way back to Zen with Citrix, right? So that they just right. don't have the machines on board. And this was often when we had remote offices mm-hmm. where they're going to be online anyway, so right. the the latency is unavoidable. Um, the bigger thing was control over data. I watched whole dev teams work this way where the the uh, code never went to the destination machine. It was all executing yeah, in a there you central go. repository yep. somewhere. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, th- for this to make, so, you know, back in the day, it was, you know, we had terminal services, mm-hmm. uh, like you said, Zen, uh, Citrix, and, yeah. um, you know. Now you have uh, Azure Virtual Desktop Azure, and right. Windows 365. Yep, that's right. And, mm-hmm. and yeah. Hmm. So, the issues would be security, privacy, because well, uh, if you're uploading, you know, important secret code, you don't want it somebody on somebody's cloud. Microsoft could probably reassure no, you. No, or that, it, right? generally, is the is the customer doesn't want the user to have the code. Right. So I'm keeping it in the cloud because it's actually <laughs> right. safer there. It's safer right? there. No <laughs> but it's all it's late. And, and I mean, if you look, if you could play uh, Diablo o- over the network, latency shouldn't be too much. of it. I played Call of Duty online over yeah. the network. Anything is yeah. possible. So, yeah. yes. I, Depends on the quality connection. Yeah. Quality of connection, uh, which most businesses probably have a pretty high speed mm-hmm. connection. Right. I suppose if your needs are minimal, which a lot of people's are. And if, like Richard said, if you only need it sometimes, even better. Well, um, the question so, is, how minimal is this? How how much yeah. do you give up by doing this? Well, I mean, in theory, it could have a no. In theory, it could be anything. That's the yeah, point. Like in theory, you could be running good. against a box that is more powerful than anything you'd yeah. have at your own desk. Right. right? You're also and, no longer upgrading those devices, right? Like, right. right. Here I am on a two year. Three I know. Year well, that's lead. the <laughs> that's part but of the. You I need would to tell me. I, I mean, know. I always thought um, that this is the best answer Microsoft could offer to the security issues because it's always up to date. Yep. It's always patched. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft has secured their own infrastructure perfectly well over the past year alone. I mean, I wouldn't worry about anything. Everything's fine. We're fine. <laughs> but they'd have to reassure people that the network 
Opera, the center network <laughs> operation centers were the, the, the first secure. hurdle here is that this is in the cloud. This is not something that's in your cloud. It's not yeah, in right. a private cloud. It's this is cloud. in Microsoft's public Microsoft's cloud. cloud. Right? Yeah. And, they, and let's so, face it, they've had better uptime than you did. No, that's not that's not my I I 100% think it's a great idea. I don't mean mm -hmm. it like that. I mean that for some organizations, some people, some whatever that that's the untenable part of it. It's like, well, hold on a second. This isn't in our own whatever yeah. it is. But you're yeah, already I mean, using Azure. Like that's already true. Right. No, I'm not I, again, I'm not I'm not actually disputing it. But yeah. you know, this is the thing. So I mean, and that yeah, being said, if it, if I was responsible for a company infrastructure like this, I would have a separate backup source, which yeah. I even have for my own M365. Right, my Synology right. backs up my M365 instances okay. onto a drive here, just because. So if I lost access to M365 for whatever reason, mm -hmm. I'd at least have a copy of everything. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's sort yeah, of a okay. reverse way of thinking. Like I want to work in the cloud, so it doesn't matter where right. I go and what device it works. But right. I also want to copy elsewhere. So if I was on a submarine, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> I've done this scenario with Jeff Snow. <laughs> yeah, he's like, day, let right? me make up the most, the stupidest possible example. Uh, we we did this for uh, um, <laughs> we we did this scenario for uh, a ship off the coast of Gabon during the Ebola crisis in 2014. Oh boy, right where okay. we did the undersea cables going into the wet Western Africa were just not fast enough, and yep. so they moved a ship with a couple of racks worth of gear in it. It was basically a localized Azure node. To support the healthcare professionals that were fighting the Ebola. So it's like Azure Arc before there was our exactly. Azure Arc, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And so it was a way we had we had a better cell signal coming off that ship onto the into the city in Cote d'Ivory than than they had normally. Yep. And we weren't dependent on any of those things, right? And then yep. and then every so no, often I, it would synchronize. I uh, well, I, I mean, I mentioned the exchange story because it's so relevant to everything. But mm -hmm. it's um, yeah, this is the same type of thing. I mean, it, we're windows uh, security and updating and whatever else is not the point of your business yeah, you know i just you do we, for a living people yeah we want them to sign in securely authenticate and uh get work done and then go back to their lives and y you're not shipping hardware around yeah. the world you're not uh, configuring laptops you, and then hope you know the same way you change that exchange server uh, that exchange administrator's life you're going to change the desktop sysadmin's life too Right yeah. now, he's on a, pro, you know, he's taking care of 1,500 seats in a mid-sized organization. Yep. He's shifted it so that every year he's replacing 25% of those machines under lease. Mm -hmm. And so that's 300-something machines that he handles every year to get redeployed with a team of folks. I put okay. these thin PCs in. I don't have to standardize the machine. You can run different VMs as you need, and they get upgraded all the time. All right. So you've got this little device. 350 bucks or whatever yep. it is obviously keyboard mouse and some kind of a screen yeah and actually you don't even need that i mean it, they you could run this off an ipad <laughs> if you had okay. to i mean right and because people they have do. that software yeah of course and uh okay i mean it's interesting i i i, I think connectivity has gotten to the point where this is possible yeah. i um when you're dealing with 20 millisecond symmetrical gigabit fiber yeah, you know that's as long as you maintain the bandwidth, you you'll be all right. As the number of seats goes up, it gets more challenging. Just don't and do also, it. The one, the that's a great that... device to send home. They're not going to do anything else with it, right? You're going <laughs> to configure. You're going right. to configure that device so that it can that's only true. communicate with the company's instances. Yep. The no, kids that, aren't going to play on it. There's going to be a very little porn on that device. I bet. I bet you could play Doom on it. I bet you could. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, fair enough. No, you're right. You're right. Okay, yeah. no, that's cool. I, and Microsoft said, by the way, there 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 will be more of these types of devices. Yeah, hmm. um, I could imagine hybrid. Not just from Microsoft. It's a it's a reference device. Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean there'll be more, right? I mean, and that, we can get. I mean, already, image don't thing. we already have such devices? Yeah, anyway. the, the thin PC movement's old. Like it's been around yeah. a long yeah. time, but this yeah, is yeah, a yeah. new wave, and the ARM hardware is especially good for this. Yeah, but also the this cloud is, is bigger. This is not Intel. This is it. Arm. Also, well, it, it it eliminates. Well, this one is, I think, is Intel, isn't it? I believe. I think this one is. But but this is a good point because actually, you uh, can make that, it out that, of an Arduino. It doesn't really yeah, need that's a lot right. of horsepower. It could be a Raspberry Five, right? <laughs> right. It, right? Exactly. And and you could have this thing that's super efficient <laughs> and silent. And if it is ARM, you don't have to worry about compatibility yeah. issues anymore because you're running everything. I love uh, how they show anyway. it driving two giant screens. I know, too. yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> to reassure yeah. you that yeah. you know you're not 
the user experience isn't going to change yeah. really well right. there's uh, they've been you know there there are uh, the dev box stuff that microsoft does for visual studio developers where you're kind of hit you're potentially hitting this incredibly powerful computer up in the cloud is, yep. and you could have a very thin and light laptop you could have a, a mac you know you, it doesn't matter right that's I mean, it kind gets of better point. than that if you're only compiling once a day you can run yeah. a light instance while you're coding and then give me yeah. more cpu it's time to compile right there you go or actually you push it off you push it through yeah i mean this is the somewhere else. yeah this is the initial promise of cloud computing it's yeah. infrastructure when you need it Only and you're not use. paying for and uh, when you're not using yeah. it, et cetera. And instead so. of me sending $1,500 laptops out to my employees to work from home, yep. I'm sending a $300 head unit. It's not good for anything else. No, it's okay. Yeah, no, that's a good argument. I like right. it. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I, I'm strictly thinking from a system in perspective. I don't know that a consumer wants this. Although, isn't this the machine you want an, uh, a grandparent to have just because they can't break it, really? They should. They could call it Web TV. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no. I, I, yeah, okay. I'm coming around to it. I, I, I'll say, you know, Azure um, virtual machines, and then they did Windows 365. I was like, I don't, I don't quite. I mean, obviously there are a reason. You know, I, there are certain things. I, I don't. I didn't see it as kind of a mainstream thing. But actually, mm -hmm. using my own words against me, which is probably smart. Um, I th you know, thinking back to that uh, exchange guy, it's really, it's the same equation, right? Mm -hmm. At some point, this becomes, this is the problem, right? We're, we're spending too much re uh, on the people and the hardware and the maintenance and upkeep and blah, 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 whatever. And of uh, Windows, in this case, and Windows PCs. And that is not what the point of this business sure. is, right? It's, um, yeah. Okay. There's a great side. The, I, I've done a bunch of run ads on AVD, on, on Azure Virtual Desktop. Yeah. The subtle thing you don't get Mm -hmm. until you really start using this is that when the user logs off like that instance is actually dismantled yeah so that when you start it back up again it literally builds it you get a fresh copy of windows each time there nice? is no it's sort rot. of like window window sandbox does yeah. something similar except there's a state that uh, you get back here yeah, you carry, carry, you're, you're connecting state. to it's your data etc that's right yeah, yeah. No, so it's, it's kind of a kiosk effect and it just like means it. yeah you yep. they the you were saying nothing's going to change there's a big thing that's going to change this is um it's, it's the chromebook support. experience yeah what, yeah it, i mean uh, really right but, it, there, but you um, still get to run that one weird cranky win 32 app that you need except yep. now it lives in a sandbox in the cloud with an administrator <laughs> making sure it doesn't get out of hand exactly. you don't i don't have to I make it run on everybody's machine by the way they used, said that these are copilot plus too right uh, okay that's so weird that's weird but okay that's fine <laughs> i mean that's fine I uh, uh, there uh, yeah so, because it makes sense to run AI locally in the data center that is also hosting the cloud AI that is too expensive to run because gee, okay I can't do the math on that but mm -hmm. um, look this is when uh, it was Terry Morrison this was the event they announced the Surface laptop uh, they did at Microsoft did an education event one spring so 2015 2017 somewhere in there and he's walking around with a us thumb key and the idea was usb thumb key that uh you know you have, you have a lab in this case of students and we need to reset these things between classes and yep. uh, here's this goofy kind of sneaker net way to do this this is something i dealt with in the 1990s i worked at a computer in a um uh, a lab at a school yeah and same same situation they were older obviously they were you know big honking desktop computers running word perfect and things like that but the idea was that you would reboot and it would run a script and it would wipe things out and bring things back and the next students would come in that would take many minutes but they would come in in, in the next class whenever that was and they would have a fresh computer everything was back to the way mm -hmm. it was supposed to be um that's still a concern i mean this is you know and and now we yeah. can do this in the cloud and it's it's clean yeah, and here let's imagine you're running classes in a yep. day. You've got four classes that day of thirty kids each. Yep, you pre-run them all, so all those yep. 120 VMs are already ready to go. 
right? And as yep. one group of kids finishes and logs out, you destroy them. They don't need to. Yeah, anymore. it happens automatically. But you're right? not I mean, waiting just, for them yeah. to start up. They're already ready. So when the next right. kids sit down, they light up. That's the great thing about the cloud, even, right? Even you don't have to just own basic, that hardware. Even just a basic productivity work or whatever, um, yeah. you know, that experiences this kind of windows rot where yep. the thing slows down over time. You, you get walkiness, right? This is the one thing um, you have to admit as a windows user, you know, one day you'll run an app that runs every day mm -hmm. and it doesn't and start up right run. or something happens or it stops connecting to the webcam or whatever it is. Like this yeah. is a way to, this is a, an extreme way, but isn't a way, a way just to get around that. This you is know? the kiosk effect. You get back yeah. to the starting state every day you turn it on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. All yeah. right. All right. All right. Well, and, and I just think, I mean, again, I'm thinking totally enterprise because I think that's why you keep me around. Um, yeah. But well, I mean, that's what this is for. That, that's the view. audience. Yeah. yeah. Right. Good. This could be a good consumer experience, too. Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.